Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to tab out of a subform in Microsoft Access using either keystrokes for the beginners or for the advanced users, the developers, I'll show you how to do it with a little VBA. Today's question comes from Carter in Rancho Cucamonga, California, one of my platinum members. Carter says, I have a form with a subform and my users keep getting confused when they get into the subform. Once they tab into it, they feel stuck and can't figure out how to get back to the main form without stopping to grab the mouse and, or clicking somewhere else. Is there an easier way to let them tab out of the subform and keep the data entry flowing smoothly? Well, yes. Now there's two ways we can do this. You can do it with some keystrokes, which will involve just some training. That's the the easy way for you, but they got to remember it, obviously, and all the new new users got to remember it. Or we can do it with a little VBA. So I'm going to show you both solutions. First off, some prerequisites. If you're not familiar with the tab order, stop and cycle, go watch this video. This is for the beginners. You got to know how tab order works, how to make fields tab stops and how the tab cycle works. And if you want to continue on to the VBA example, go watch my key down event. This teaches you how to trap key clicks on the keyboard, right? Key press, well not key presses because key press is a different event. It, it lets you trap when the user hits a key, <laughs> okay? And that's what we're gonna use for the VBA solution. These are free videos. And this one has some prerequisites too, including my intro to VBA class. So go watch this if you're just getting started with VBA before you watch the key down video. Okay, all right, let me show you the beginner method first. All right, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database you can get off my website if you want to. And in here, we've got a customer form and customers have contacts. And then as part of showing you how I built this, I also built the same thing as customers with contacts. So it's got a sub form instead of opening up a second form. Okay, now the way this is currently set up is I have it so that the, the sub form is not a tab stop. So as you hit the tab key, it tabs right past it and goes to the next record. Okay, so we're gonna change this. So we're gonna make it so that the subform is a tab stop. And I'm also gonna change the cycle so that it just repeats the current record. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Design view. We have to select the subform object itself. Make sure it's orange all the way around it, not anything inside of here. All right, you gotta get the subform object the subform object is an object on the parent form. So double click on that. That'll bring up this property sheet. It says subform sub report contact F. Okay. Now we're going to find other and set tab stop to yes. That means that when we're tabbing, it will go into the sub form. All right. I turned that off when I built this. So save that. And if I reopen it now, you'll watch as I go tab, 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 tab. Tab, it tabs right into it, see? Okay. Now the problem is we get stuck down here. So I'm hitting tab, 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 and nothing's happening because that is the end of the records in the subform. It's a continuous form. Now here's where the keystrokes come in for the beginners. If you hit control tab, it tabs past this to the next field on the parent form. And since this is the last field in the tab order, the next field happens to be the first field on the next record, okay? It's just like if you were here and you tab, 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 tab past all of these controls, it just goes to the next record. Well, that's the same thing that happened here, right? Control tab will tab you out of the subform to the next record. That's why I said, let's make it so that the cycle is the current record. So go up here, pick the properties for the parent form, and we're gonna change the cycle to current record. That way it just tabs back to the same person. Okay, so save it, save it, close it, close it, open it back up again. And now I can go tab, tab, tab. I just wanna hold the tab key down. I'll get way to the end here. All right, now if I hit control tab, it brings me right back up here to the first field in the parent form, see? All right, you can also use control shift tab if you're down here. All right, control tab goes to the next control after the subform. Control shift tab goes to the previous control in the parent form. So whatever was right before the subform. But getting people just to remember control tab is enough. 
You can put down here if you want to, if it's a training thing, if you plan on going with the beginner method, just put a little note down here in like a label that says, hey, hit control tab to go back to the parent form, right? That, that's a training issue. As a side note, the way I've got this set up is I've got the date and the description up here as fields in the continuous form and down here is, a, is the footer of the form in here. So if you're right there and you wanna to go to that notes field, you can hit F6. That'll jump you down to the notes field, right? I don't like F6 though, because if you keep hitting F6 again, it'll jump you over to the navigation pane and then up to the ribbon and then up to there and then back there. So F6 just moves you around to the next group. So I try not to use F6. I got most of this stuff turned off anyways in databases that my users get their hands on. Okay, so there's, so there's basically control tab and control shift tab. Now, what about the programming method? All right, VBA, put your VBA hats on for the developers in there. What I'm gonna do is in here, as I'm going tab, 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 all right, at this point now, I wanna look at the key down event. So when the user hits a key, if they hit the tab key and I'm on the blank new record, right? This is the blank new record. You can't see it because it's not on here, but the contact ID will be null on this record, right? Because it doesn't have one. So you start typing in here, now it's got a value. But if you don't, this contact ID, which is the primary key of the contact table is null. So I'm gonna say in the key down event, if the contact ID is null, and if they hit key code nine, which is tab, in the key code video, I show you how to figure out what all these key codes are, right? But the tab key is key code nine. If that's the case, then I want you to go up here. I want you to set the focus and the parent forms customer ID. Okay, what does this look like? Well, let's right click design view. Let's go to this guy. You gotta click on it twice. Right, because remember, the first click is the subform, the second click is the description field. Okay, now double click on his border. That'll bring up the property sheet for the description field. Make this a little bit smaller here. All right, go to events. We're finding the key down event. And then I'm gonna hit the dot, dot, dot button to build up my, to build up, to bring up my builder. All right, here we are. We're in the description key down event. We're gonna come in here. I'm going to say if is null contact ID, then, right, we're on the, the last record that's null. Do some stuff and then end if. Then, if that's the case, we're going to say if the key code equals nine, then that's the tab key. Do some stuff, right, end if. Why am I making it two separate if blocks? We'll talk about that at the end of the video. All right. If that's the case, we're gonna say parent customer ID. That's the field I wanna jump to. It's the customer ID field on the parent form. This way you don't gotta worry about what the name of the form is, right? Just say parent, okay? Dot set focus, jump to it. All right, now there's one more thing you have to do and this is very important. In fact, this came up in the forums on my website a couple days ago. You have to swallow that keystroke, right? You have to say key code equals zero. All right, swallow it, okay? Otherwise, you're just reacting to the tab key, but you're still allowing it to happen. So you have to set key code equals zero, and that tells Access, ignore that keystroke, okay? I don't want you to process it, All right? Came up a couple days in the Access Developer Forum on my website, All right? David came up with the same, some very similar question. He had, the, he had the code just right, except he forgot to swallow the keystroke. And then I told him at the end here, I was like, you gotta swallow it. <laughs> Okay, so let's save it. Always throw in a debug compile once in a while. Close it, close it, open it. Ready? Tab, 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 right back up there. See? Or wherever else you want to jump to. I jumped the customer ID. You could jump the first name. You could jump wherever. You could jump to your mom's house. I don't care. Right? There we go. Oh, interesting thing to note also is. If you leave the tab here, when you tab off of it, that's the spot that's where your cursor is in that subform. So you notice what happened? And if I go tab, 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 it's still jumping back down here. Okay, so if you want, you could trap another event, you could say right in here, 
with this guy, if the, if the user hits tab off of here, go to the first record in here using go to record. You could do that as well. All right, and if anybody wants to see it, you can't figure it out, let me know. Maybe I'll do another video on it. It's really easy. I've, I've got a whole separate video on go to record and go to control. You can use those. All right, now why did I make this and this two separate commands instead of just saying if is null contact ID and key code equals nine? Anybody know? It would basically look like this. This looks like shorter code, right? Um, this is because VBA does not practice something called short circuit evaluation. And this is a very, very nerdy topic. And the only reason that I even bother with this is because I used to be a C programmer. And in the C language, if you evaluate something and it turns out to be whatever you're looking for, true or false, it will immediately exit that and, and bypass the loop. Whereas with VBA, VBA is going to evaluate everything on that line, okay? And it's going to check this, it's going to check this, it's going to check all the conditions and then put them all together. Whereas other languages, like I said, with C, doesn't, it won't do that. So if this is an and condition, as soon as it hits this, and if this is not true, it'll, it'll drop out. Now, for an example like this, it's silly because these are both going to happen instantaneously. But sometimes you've got maybe functions in here with DLOOKUPs and stuff that can take a lot of time, right? If you're saying, you know, if uh, D count customer T, blah, 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 and that's got to look through 5,000 records, or D count customer F, blah, 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 right? So if you've, got, if you've got items in your statement here that take a long time to evaluate, you're better off doing this and making each one of those a separate if then. Because if this one turns out to be false, it bypasses it and jumps past everything else. Whereas if you write it like this, and each one of these is a very long statement, right? It's gonna take a lot longer. So that's why when it comes to VBA, I am in the habit of writing stuff like this. Okay, that's all. But that's all, that's how you tab out of a subform. I know a lot of people have asked about that. This has been on my list for a while and that issue came up in the forums and I'm like, you know what? I've been wanting to make a video about this for a while now. So there you go. That's how you tab out of a sub form. And that's going to be your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.